Well, welcome back. Episode four, Chasing Timothy, something about young leaders. I didn't read the tagline again beforehand. So this is Chasing Timothy, but we're excited because we are talking about young leaders in the church. You guys as middle school, as high schoolers, how do you um, take what Paul, a veteran in the faith, a uh, giant of the faith, if you will, uh, how do you take what he wrote to a young guy leading a church, jumping into ministry for the first time, um, leading out this church? How do you take that and apply it to yourself in 2023 when you're frequenting Sierra Vista and Canarelli and downtown Summerlin or Town Square? Like Timothy's context was so different. So how do I apply this in my life? That is our hope for you out of this. And we're going to really get into some specifics, I think, today, because we're at that section in Timothy chapter four, um, where he really just kind of goes into very specific things of, hey, these are the things that I have for you and what Timothy, you need to be doing as you're doing this. So a lot of what's been said previously on the last three episodes has been kind of up in the air, theological stuff. Like, hey, these are some instructions God has for us as Christians, all these, but he's about to get real practical with Timothy. So I'm excited for this episode. So let me remind you who we have with me. My name's Robert. um, And yeah, I'm just here to have a good time, I guess, um, and lead this thing out. So uh, this is Sarah, our student worship leader. Um, You can can, like wave to them. You don't have to be like, okay, there you go. Go. Like it was just like an awkward like. Sorry. I'm Sarah. Yeah, I don't I'm know Sarah. what to do. Nah, I'm just kidding. He exposed uh, you, bro. <laughs> the finger guns. It's the finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's Ben. Our oh my gosh, digital coordinator. There it is. Yeah, so go. We got, got it. it. Digital coordinator runs Instagram. All does all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have Pastor Derek <laughs> from Midtown coming over to hang with us over here and students. So. You gonna say yeah. anything? What? You're not gonna wave. <laughs> not party We're supposed guy. To wave not there. the party guy. <laughs> I don't. I don't get the reference. <laughs> it's actually not Derek. We brought somebody else in it's for his twin. glasses on him. I don't so understand the reference. We cut Derek after that last one. It's Daryl. So Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll let Daryl lead us off. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, let's do this. I want to jump specifically into first Timothy four, 11 through 16. So I'm going to read it and remind us of what it says. And then we're going to get into some very specific questions. So let's do this. Uh, first Timothy four, 11 command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, this is uh, Paul saying, until I come see you at that church, um, devote yourself to the public reading of scriptures, to preaching, and to teaching. Don't neglect your gifts, which you have been given through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourselves wholly to them. So that you, uh, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. There's a lot in there. One of the most famous verses, obviously, is verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. Ultimately, Paul's giving this warning to Timothy of like, hey, bro. Here's some expectations for you, not even just for your church. This is very specific to Timothy as the leader. He's writing, uh, it sounds like very specific to Timothy because he's like, until I come see you, devote yourself to these things. Devote your life to these things. So um, as you guys look at that list of all these different things, what are some things that stuck out to you? And how would you apply those to your life if, say, you were in 2023 and reading this? Ben. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's great. Uh, I actually, what kind of sticks Good out stuff. to me. Good stuff, moving on. Uh, no, just <laughs> <laughs> what sticks out to me, which might be a little different than what most people would look at, but uh, it's uh, verse 13, until I come, devote yourselves to public reading of scripture and preaching and teaching. Well, like just the public aspect. I think sometimes, you know, being a Christian, I don't know, you get, you get nervous about like how what it looks like to to be a follower of Christ, like doing it publicly, like not being ashamed of what you believe in. So that kind of posture from a young age, because I'm still, because you could get, you know, older and get around a certain crowd and start changing up what you really believe in. So yeah, it's a different perspective. That's good. It kind of, it even kind of goes back to what we mentioned on episode one, I think it was mm-hmm. with the myths and stuff and all the different things we're learning. Like in those moments when people are showing you those things and doing those things and other people are believing them, you're standing true to what you believe in the face of the public 
it's not just a thing you're doing behind closed doors, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm in my room reading my Bible, but you're literally like, oh, what? Do, hey, what are you listening to in your AirPods? Oh, Elevation Worship. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to just be like, oh, it's Drake, I guess. Yeah, Like, exactly. that's not, like, you're being very public about what you've been called to. And I, that, I love that. That's cool. Because that's funny. That didn't even, the public part didn't even stick out to me until yeah. you said that. Yeah. Um, so Derek, what do, you, what do you think? What sticks out to you? What is something that um, these students can really just take and apply in 2023? Yeah, well, uh, Paul's writing here is is gas. Uh, I mean, he's like, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Paul is like, yeet me that pen. Because <laughs> uh, I, I have some gas, some gas fire. <laughs> <laughs> for for these that's not even close for these to little what? Ephesians <laughs> to these little Ephesians <laughs> yeah wow so, that was he's you got two more episodes to come up with like relevant things and I think you're like stretching it now is gas in uh it is I guess okay. like I yeah gas fire was probably the better reference okay. gas, gas is in gas is, gas is in is. okay you know, the, the two younger people just said gas is <laughs> in so yeah let's <laughs> confirm go. gas cool. is a term we can use cool. Sweet. Okay, great. Thank you guys for those vibes. <laughs> <laughs> You're running out, Derek. You better yeah, use it wisely. Yeah, he just used there. three in <laughs> one episode. Yourself. Well, here now I'm going to sound like I'm uh, 60. Uh, you know, when you look at verse 12, they give this list. And uh, here's here's the not fun word. I think it just practically for me and for students, it's a list that you can audit yourself through, meaning to like evaluate, almost like imagine a rubric, which I know is not the most fun thing. But like, okay, I want to follow Jesus. How do I do that? Well, like there's ways to look at this. So like, truly, what does your speech look like? Like, like, what do your words look like? Are you rocking out and, and you're singing like songs or, or whatever? And then like, you know, you say terrible things. Like that's an area to work on. And that's not, not trying to say you have to, that only God will love you if you do that. That's not what this whole thing is, but like, that's an area to work on. Um, you know, in love, like not just love to the people you care about, but to the people who are hard to love people on your team, people uh, who are ignored. Um, and maybe you're the ignored person and yet you still have to work on loving others. And so for me, it's like this really practical, I love practical. It's like, okay, when I read this, it's like, these are things I can work on. Um, and the cool thing is you don't ever arrive, right? And uh, so I find myself still doing that. I would encourage students, like, look at that list. Like, where, where are you struggling? Go after that. That's good. I love that you said you you never arrive because like I think and all humor aside, we've been joking about your age and how they're much younger. Than, but all humor aside, in all reality, like we could sit here and go like, well, we're farther along in life than you. And like we could we could bring wisdom and like we could teach the young people but, like, hey, like Derek and I are still learning every single day, like every single day. Like when I say that that idea about public didn't stick out to me until you said it. That's me still learning from scripture. That's me still learning and growing who I am. And there's stuff that I'm still working on. So I love that, that the idea that you just, you don't arrive. Like you're always, we will arrive when we're in heaven sitting at Jesus's feet because we will be in our glorified state, knowing everything, understanding God at that point. But here on this earth, we're always going to be growing. We're always going to be learning. So Sarah, what about you? What stuck out to you in those verses? What's something that students can practically just take from this? Um, it kind of relates to what you were just saying. Um, but yeah, verse 12 has always been one of my favorite verses. Um, always super encouraging, um, especially being young and seeing how the older people, you know, have no problem taking charge if they need to. And, um, but I feel like there's a good balance where it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Um, receiving that the right way, you know, it's encouraging and things like that, but that doesn't mean to disrespect your elders. You know, that doesn't mean to disregard what they've experienced, what they've lived through all that they have to teach you. So it's like, um, definitely, definitely, you know, validating the things God's placed in you because they're needed. Um, they're all needed, whether it's, you know, whatever, you know, Derek has to offer you or Pastor Shane or whoever and the things we have to offer, they're all needed. And that goes back into just the moving pieces of the body of Christ. Um, So just like letting that encourage you, but also remembering um, we're all needed and, and respecting your elders is still so important. Yeah, that's good. I love that because then uh, what's funny is it also takes me to verse 14. Do not ne- neglect your gifts, mm-hmm. which were given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. That's a phrase that like you don't really hear often anymore, especially in probably the crossing context. Um, and it was this idea that the 
elders in the church, the older people were speaking over the young people. The elders were praying on Sarah's behalf saying, God, what do you have for Sarah? Sarah, this is what God's saying about you. And God was speaking through them at that time. Right? So I think that there's a lot of, I guess there's, I guess, I don't even know if this is a phrase, but like proof in the pudding. I think that's a phrase. Like there's a lot of proof in this Mm -hmm. of like pudding, pudding, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow, I'm the one that sounds old now. But, there, <laughs> but there's a lot of proof in this because like he's saying there's all these different gifts throughout uh, the church that maybe you don't even see yet, but the elders see it in you. Mm. So I love the idea that you're saying, no, like we can't just because you're young and you offer something, you can't discount the older crowd either. You can't yeah. discount the elders, the ones who have been going through the faith for generations. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that's something that people see and speak into you. Derek, do you have anything that you would say to those students that maybe ha- are sitting here listening, thinking, well, I don't really know what Derek or what Pastor Shane or what the elders or what Lee or Scott, these people that maybe they hear these names, but they don't really know because they're like, well, they're not young like me. They're the older crowd. Like what, what would you say to students who are sitting there thinking, well, I don't really have anything to learn from them? Oh yeah. Um, you know, and I, I've been there at times where I'm like, I think I have it, you know, I made a joke in an earlier episode. Uh, the most I ever knew was my first year of Bible college but there's this thing that's been really helpful. I didn't come up with it, but um, we have access to a lot of knowledge as younger people. Like you can Google anything, you can Google all the right Bible answers, all that. So we have a lot of head knowledge, but what wisdom is, and the Bible talks a lot about it, is wisdom is really what you want. Like that is the top of the tower and wisdom is knowledge plus experience. And one thing we can't fake is experience. Students, we can't fake that. I can't fake that. I've only uh, pastored a church location for two years. Some of these other people have done that for 20, 30, 40 years. And so my encouragement is like, there's so much to learn from older people, not just pastors, but across the board because they have wisdom and wisdom can't be faked. That's good. I like that. Um, I, I, we're going to end it there. Cause I think that's like, that's, that's strong. That was really strong. So, um, we're going to get into next episode, chapter five, another kind of funky chapter in second Timothy. So we're just going to default to Derek on this next one. Um, but for real, we're going to jump into this. I mean, just to give you a little teaser, here's the title of that section, widows, elders, and slaves. Whoa. What the heck is happening? <laughs> and that's going to be my first question as we jump into this. What is going on? So we'll see you back next uh, next time. I don't know if uh, this one will actually probably be coming out the same week as this one. So uh, make sure you're watching out for the next episode within the next couple of days because it is Thanksgiving week. So, uh, hey, happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys out there. So this is really exciting. And if I got my dates wrong, this will be really embarrassing. But see you next time on episode five. <laughs>